Over the past few decades, chainsaws have loudly and gruesomely carved out a very special place in video games. We just got a new Evil Dead game, and there's one based on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre around the corner, so it seemed like the right time to look back at how far this power tool has come. Put on your favorite blood-splattered apron and stand back, because we're about to pull the ripcord, rev this sucker up, and tear through the history of video game chainsaws. We probably wouldn't have chainsaws in video games without their place in horror movies. So let's start with the first instance of chainsaw violence in a game, the 1983 Atari 2600 adaptation of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This game strove to authentically capture Leatherface's murderous antics as an interactive experience. Okay, so it looked about as much like the terrifying Texan taxidermist as it did like Ralph Wiggum with his sleeves tangled up trying to tickle people, but still, the idea of a game with the objective of committing as many chainsaw murders as possible was controversial enough for some retailers to refuse to carry it, which caused its sales to get, well, massacred. It's taken nearly 50 years for another Texas Chainsaw Massacre game to come along, but that hasn't stopped Leatherface's, uh, face from popping up elsewhere. The new game likely exists because of the success of Dead by Daylight, where he was a special guest character. Before that, he was in Mortal Kombat, where killing someone with a chainsaw is almost tame compared to some of the finishers. He was also in Call of Duty, where there are no actual chainsaws, but they did give him a machine gun with a chainsaw grip painted in chainsaw colors. There is another horror series known for its total disregard of chainsaw safety, which has gotten quite a few games. Games. Evil Dead. The first game it inspired was The Evil Dead for Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum way back in 1984. It features very little chainsaw since it predates Evil Dead 2 by a few years. The first film does have a chainsaw scene, but it's the sequel where one takes a more starring role, literally getting grafted onto the star. At this point, Ash Williams has appeared in more video games than movies. In 2000, Evil Dead Hail to the King went the survival horror route, cribbing fixed camera angles and inventory management from Resident Evil. Evil Dead games haven't been pigeonholed in any one genre, though. Evil Dead has inspired hack-and-slash action games, tower defense games, virtual reality infinite runners, and that's not counting Ash's guest spots in everything from Poker Night 2 to the Family Guy mobile game. Ash appeared alongside Leatherface as Dead by Daylight DLC and was seemingly being teased as a fighter in Mortal Kombat, but that never happened. Ash Williams has not been in Call of Duty, but Bruce Campbell did show up in Advanced Warfare's Exo Zombies mode, sadly lacking in any chainsaw appendages. If we're gonna survive, we have to work together. The new game goes the co-op route and has Ash sharing the spotlight with some of his allies from his various adventures. And yes, of course there's a chainsaw. But what about horror video games involving chainsaws that aren't based on movies? There are plenty of those, but the first big one was 1988's Splatterhouse. Mechanically, it's a beat-em-up arcade game, but it makes no attempt to hide its hack-and-slash horror influences. The boss Biggie Man manages to one-up Ash and Leatherface with two chainsaw hands and a face that's so gross they had to put a burlap sack over it. It wasn't until 2010's Splatterhouse reboot that protagonist Rick would get his turn to play with power tools by forcibly borrowing one of Biggie Man's. The first true horror game to include a chainsaw was 1999's Silent Hill, which is ironic considering how thoroughly unsilent chainsaws are. Resident Evil wouldn't add them until Resident Evil 4, but when it rains, it pours. Though not a true boss or remotely important to the story, the chainsaw-wielding man encountered early on in the village would become almost a mascot for the game. In addition to being featured heavily in marketing, including a prominent spot on the box art, he would inspire Capcom to produce limited edition chainsaw-shaped PS2 and GameCube controllers. Trying to play the game with one of these is only slightly less cumbersome than using an actual chainsaw. Chainsaw Man wasn't alone, though. There were also the chainsaw-wielding Bella Sisters, and a special bonus Jumbo Chainsaw Man in Mercenaries mode, who was not only big, but also had a double chainsaw, which is awesome. Weirdly, according to an in-game collectible, the regular Chainsaw Man's name is officially Dr. Salvador, which raises all sorts of questions about his medical background and overall bedside manner. <laughs> Resident Evil 5 and 6 also included Chainsaw Men in one form or another. Resident Evil 7's return to survival horror cribbed heavily from the hoarder house decor of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it was only fitting that there'd be a boss with giant homemade chainsaw scissors. You know what they say, fight fire with fire. 
After parting ways with Capcom, Resident Evil creator Shinji Mikami returned to survival horror with 2014's The Evil Within. And who better to welcome horror fans to this gruesome new world than this enormous man with a chainsaw? Though headshots will always be the most surefire method of dispatching zombies, a chainsaw will get the job done just as well. Left 4 Dead 2 had players scrounging for gas between safe rooms instead of just ammo. Dead Rising had an entire shopping mall's worth of weapons, so it would be silly not to have a chainsaw. Maybe not as silly as the sequel's double-ended chainsaw paddle, but we're not complaining. Meanwhile, in a different different shopping mall in a different medium, the Dawn of the Dead remake featured parking shuttles with specially designed chainsaw turrets. This was courtesy of screenwriter James Gunn, who, despite his projectile namesake, is clearly more of a chainsaw enthusiast. Later, he gave us Lollipop Chainsaw, which starred a peppy cheerleader eviscerating hordes of the Walking Dead with the eponymous power tool. One game that did zombies before they were cool was Zombies Ate My Neighbors, where you got chased by guys with chainsaws and hockey masks. Sadly, you couldn't actually use the chainsaws on the zombies, which was a crime. Speaking of which, that brings brings us to our next topic, crime. Another milestone in Chainsaw Cinema was Brian De Palma's 1983 crime epic Scarface, a major influence on 2002's Grand Theft Auto Vice City. In addition to a job where Tommy Versetti was tasked with using a chainsaw to terrorize the competition, players could also famously find a chainsaw stashed away in a bloody bathroom. A few years later, players could also make a polygonal Pacino push it to the officially licensed limit in Scarface The World Is Yours. In addition to introducing more people to his little friend, he could also dispatch them with a certain gas-powered business associate who needs no introduction. The GTA series seems downright wholesome when compared to 2003's Manhunt, another Rockstar project that somehow managed to attract even more controversy than the one named after a felony. In Manhunt, players were tasked with murdering other murderers, creating snuff films in the process. And of course, one of these involved a chainsaw, but this time around Rockstar was clearly taking more cues from Leatherface than Tony Montana. Never bashful about copying GTA's homework here and there, 2008 Saints Row 2 and its sequel would both include chainsaws, but in a series with four-foot dildos, weaponized farts and jars and septic tank trucks that spray poo-poo every which way, something they sell at Home Depot seems pretty mundane by comparison. On the other side of the Pacific, the Yakuza series has weaponized everything including the kitchen sink, and a chainsaw would make its dramatic entrance in 2010's Yakuza 4. Now, with all due respect to the fine folks at the Ryobi and Makita tool companies, a chainsaw seems a little out of place in an urban metropolis more densely populated than anywhere else on the planet, but video games have made chainsaws boldly go where no power tool has gone before. So let's talk about chainsaws in space, or at least vaguely futuristic science fiction settings. There are no trees on Mars, so why would you need a chainsaw in a Martian space colony? Well, in case the gates of hell open and you have to rip and tear robot Satan, a new asshole, obviously. In 1993, Doom changed gaming forever, effectively establishing the first-person shooter genre as we know it, but it wasn't just shooting. Alongside the BFG and the rocket launcher was the trusty chainsaw, which conveniently never ran out of gas. The original saw was modeled after a McCulloch Eager Beaver that id Software co-founder Tom Hall borrowed from his girlfriend, and it would go on to become a staple of the Doom series, though it underwent some changes. Like everything else in 1997's Doom 64, the chainsaw got a makeover for no conceivable reason. In 2004's Doom 3, the chainsaw was given a bit of a backstory. The reason for chainsaws on Mars? A clerical error! It was supposed to be a shipment of jackhammers, which actually seems quite useful for terraforming and or digging a hole to hell. In 2016, Doom took the franchise back to its run-and-gun roots with a heavy emphasis on ripping and tearing. The chainsaw was now a pain saw, and though it ran on gas, it could be refueled with violence. But let's back up. The 90s was packed with first-person shooters that borrowed liberally from Doom, but most had the common sense to stick to firearms rather than try to one-up the iconic chainsaw. Id Software even struggled to top their own game's gadget. 1996's Quake tried to work the same hardware store magic for nail guns with not only a regular nail gun, but also a super nail gun, whatever that means, really hammering it home with Nine Inch Nails doing the soundtrack and Trent Reznor voicing the player character. There were chainsaws throughout Quake being wielded by ogres, but sadly, these couldn't be used by players. Players. Quake 2's second expansion would later introduce a chainsaw, but it didn't quite cut it. 1996's Duke Nukem 3D almost featured a laser chainsaw, but the devs scrapped the idea at the last minute, instead arming Duke with a variety of mostly original weapons and some considerably less original one-liners, which he borrowed from a certain one-handed chainsaw evangelist. Groovy.
The over-the-top arsenal of 1999's Unreal Tournament included a chainsaw, despite them being very real, but it was mostly upstaged by the Ripper, a gun that launched circular saw blades like high-speed murder frisbees, which would ricochet all over and would instantly decapitate anyone sticking their neck out. Great for death matches, questionable for tree service. Yep, for the most part, Doom was original as hell, but it did its share of ripping and tearing from other media. The soundtrack took some cues from Metallica, the Cacodemon is undeniably an astral dreadnought from Dungeons and Dragons, and there's another very popular game that also stars chainsaw-wielding space marines waging war on deep space demons, Warhammer 40,000. This dark gothic sci-fi spin on Games Workshop's fantasy tabletop classic debuted in 1987 and featured various factions armed with chain swords. Since then, the 40k empire has conquered a sizable video game territory spanning multiple genres. Okay, so maybe the chain sword isn't technically a chain saw, but if we omitted them from this list, we would incur the wrath of legions of steady-handed enthusiasts with null oil-stained fingers and dreadnought-sized holes in their bank accounts. As lore has it, by the 41st millennium, chainsaw scientists have discovered ways to sharpen each link to a microscopically fine point, making for a much better weapon than the clunky, jagged, gas-guzzling saws of present day, especially when wielded by an eight-foot-tall genetically engineered shock trooper who's all jazzed up to do the Emperor's bidding because anything less would be heresy. Now what if you took Warhammer 40k and put it in an affliction shirt and blasted it with Axe body spray and taught it to crush beer cans on its head? Well, you'd have 2006's Gears of War. Both star lumbering tough-ass grunts machine gunning the shit out of inhuman hordes for reasons that are further elaborated on in lengthy paperback novels, and like Warhammer, Gears wasn't afraid to get creative with the chainsaws. In this case, by putting them on the machine guns themselves. <laughs> The Lancer gave a new meaning to the word chain gun, putting all stationary bayonets to shame and loudly establishing itself as one of the most iconic video game weapons ever. Who could have invented such a kick-ass weapon? None other than Adam Jonathan Phoenix, the father of Gears of War protagonist Marcus Phoenix. Dude, his dad owns a chainsaw machine gun dealership. It's hard to subtly include chainsaws in anything, but they've been in the Fallout game since the first installment way back in 97. But it seems like Power Armor and Pit Boys have become more emblematic of that universe and its technology. Though originally described as a vibroblade, the Ripper is quite clearly a chainsaw knife. In its earlier iterations, Ripper was a trademarked brand of consumer-grade tool within the Fallout universe, like Sawzall or Weed Whacker. Concept art for Fallout Tactics even included a still logo. In the later games, it took on a gnarly industrial-grade military issue aesthetic, but again, much like Saints Row's chainsaw, the Ripper seems fairly grounded when other over-the-top weapons include a flamethrower katana or a rocket-powered sledgehammer. But hey, nobody does over-the-top like Japan, and when it comes to what's realistic, Japanese developers generally have no problem fudging the numbers for the sake of making something look cool as shit. In 2009, Platinum Games published not one, but two games featuring extremely over-the-top chainsaw action. There was the black-and-white beat-em-up Mad World, which was frequently also read all over thanks to its protagonist's chainsaw hand. <laughs> And then there was Bayonetta. In a game about a witch who looks like a heavily armed S&M Sarah Palin wearing her own hair as clothing, nobody is gonna bat an eyelash if she pulls a gigantic designer chainsaw out of thin air. In 1994's Final Fantasy VI, Edgar can attack with a chainsaw while wearing a hockey mask a la Jason Voorhees. Side note, Jason never used a chainsaw, he's a machete guy. <laughs> but the hockey mask chainsaw combo has become universal shorthand for a slasher. In addition to FF6 and Zombies Ate My Neighbors, it's been everywhere from Christmas movies, to kids shows, to Eminem's stage act, and yes, of course, The Simpsons did it. Mark, you wanna see my new chainsaw and hockey mask? Ah! Oh, sorry, what am I thinking? Anyway, my point is, it's also an FF6. In 1997's Final Fantasy VII, Barrett could swap his prosthetic chain gun hand for a chainsaw, which adheres to Tetsuya Nomura's design philosophy of, hey, if it looks cool, why the f*** not? A few years later, Nomura would incorporate a chainsaw into some sketches he was doing for a new game called Kingdom Hearts. Needless to say, the chainsaw wasn't exactly a hit with Disney executives, so we got Keyblades instead. From Software's mostly fantasy Soulsborne games have understandably skirted away from chainsaws, but 2015's Bloodborne gets an honorable mention for having multiple saw weapons and multiple chain weapons, but no weapons that are saws made out of chains. That said, FromSoft's games have inspired plenty of other games, including 2017's high-tech industrial souls born The Surge, which put a chainsaw front and center. If you've made it this far in the video, you clearly don't have an issue with video game chainsaw violence, but if you do, I have great news. 
Not all chainsaws in video games are used to do horrible, gruesome murders. At this point in the existence of video games, there are simulations of nearly any activity, whether you want to be a farmer, or a bus driver, or a surgeon, or a goat, or a piece of bread, and unsurprisingly, there are multiple options for anyone wanting to experience the thrill of chainsaw use. You want to cut down some trees? There's Lumberjack Simulator, Lumberjack's Dynasty, Professional Lumberjack 2015, and if you want to do it in VR, you've got even more options. If you're more into tree trimming than full-on deforestation, there's also Chop and Drop about line workers. Meanwhile, Power Tools VR lets you get creative with chainsaw sculptures. Even Nintendo, the bastion of family-friendly gaming, has made a few games with chainsaws, and not always being used safely. An entire generation has fond memories of Super Mario World and a proportionate amount of childhood trauma associated with those nerve-wracking automated chainsaw traps. If more than 15 people had bought Virtual Boys, there might be a similar sentiment toward the hockey mask chainsaw fish lurking in the blood-red depths of that ill-fated system's Wario Land. One of Nintendo's biggest successes in recent years was 2020's Animal Crossing New Horizons. Among the hundreds of unique items that players can collect to lovingly decorate and or sloppily clutter up their islands, there is a chainsaw available in six charming colors. But despite Animal Crossing being a game with a heavy emphasis on yard work, plant care, and land clearing, the chainsaw is frustratingly just for decoration. Yep, you gotta make those bells the old-fashioned way, and really, we can't have anyone terrorizing the other villagers with power tools, just butterfly nets. And on that note, I think we're running on fumes, so let's cut this short. What video game chainsaw are you most outraged we left out? Is it the one from Time Killers? <laughs> Oh, well, now we didn't leave it out. What's your favorite video game chainsaw or power tool in general? And more importantly, what specific video game weapon or gadget would you like a deep dive on? Sound off in the comments, and for everything power tools, you are already in the right place. Home Depot. I'm just kidding, IGN. Oh.